Barnard College is the preeminent women's college in the country, and we're dedicated to celebrating women's excellence in all its forms. I'm Sion Bylock, the president of Barnard. On behalf of the entire Barnard community, I'm so proud to welcome you to the 11th annual Athena Film Festival, a true celebration of women and leadership. The spirit of the festival reflects Barnard's legacy of supporting women and giving them the academic and community resources they need to become leaders in all fields and industries. Alums who have dared to make their mark on the world like activists Grace Lee Boggs, Shirley Adelson Siegel, and Connie Hess Williams. Storytellers like Zora Neale Hurston, Anna Quinlan, and Greta Gerwig, and scientists such as Margaret Mead, Helen Rainey, and Jackie Barton. Today, we continue to support our current students as they prepare to emerge as the next generation of courageous and audacious leaders. Barnard is so proud to be the home of the Athena Film Festival. So sit back and enjoy the show. Barnard College and the Athena Film Festival are here to amplify and celebrate these awesome stories. Hello, hello, honeys. Good evening. How is everybody today? Uh, just wanted to give a big shout out to our sponsor of this event, Elizabeth Cuthrell of Even Star Films. And my name is Melissa Silverstein. I am the artistic director and co-founder of the Athena Film Festival. Super excited to be having this conversation today with Susan Sandler, the director of Julia Scotti and Julia Scotti. Thank you both for being here. Susan, you are on mute, just so you know. Okay, good. Oh, let's um, take No, nope, all good. Oh, thank, thank you, you for both for me. coming. Okay, so um, Susan, let's start off with you. Sure. Um, you've been a writer. You've been a professor teaching screenwriting at NYU for a really long time, and now you are in the director's chair. Tell us why. Uh, what was about this film that um, you wanted to direct? I, you know, it, it began with the story of falling in love with Julia first in performance. I saw her in performance in a comedy performance on Nantucket and what she was doing, her voice was so extraordinary and so alive. And we met and talked about something she was writing and mm -hmm. I offered to help her with that, offered to help her dramaturgically. And that friendship grew into a realization that her life was so rich and so important that it want, wanted to be a story and the, the form really needed to be a documentary. So I stepped into a whole new adventure because of Julia. And, and um, did you enjoy uh, directing? Is it something that you now think you might do again? Oh yeah. Okay. And, and specifically for documentary, it's so much about writing. It's so mm -hmm. much about finding the story in enormous amounts of material. So. Uh, the process itself was wonderful, really, really exciting in terms of the materials, the archival materials and, you know, the unexpected. It's all about the unexpected in documentary. And Julia did a whole lot of that. Yeah. Julia, <laughs> I mean, I know you're a performer. You get up on stage and you're comfortable with that. But um, did you have any, you know, second, third, fourth thoughts about um, letting yourself be a subject of a documentary? Um, you know, Susan has this way of... <laughs> Just making you 
she's got like a velvet glove and pounds you over the head. You don't even know you're getting <laughs> pulled into the thing. She was wonderful the whole time. She was very uh, loving, uh, very caring about uh, the whole process. If I got uncomfortable, mm. uh, I told her she would ask me uh, ahead of time, is this okay if we do this? Do you mind if we do this? And and she really, uh, if I, you know, if I really pitched a bit, she would say, you know, she would just go, okay, I respect that. So she was wonderful to work with. Uh, how long did it take you guys to um, complete it? <laughs> this was a, altogether a six-year process, in, including post. Um, That's not too long for a doc. Yeah, we, yeah. we hear that a lot. Yeah. I, I had was, dark hair when we started. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was mentored in this process by some wonderful people, including um, Sam Pollard who mm -hmm. gave me that advice early on and said, you know, how long is it? And he, when he looked at our first cut and said, it's been at this point four years, he said, that's about right. You know, keep going. <laughs> you know, so it was, for Julia, it was a little bit of a learning process too. When, when it was, it was movie, a shock, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I figured it was, you know, six months will be done. And, you know, uh, and it just, every time I would ask, how's it going? You know, uh, it it was always, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're, we're looking. So. Um, okay. So I have, a, I want to ask you a couple of questions, Julia, about, mm -hmm. you know, what goes on in the film, what we learn about you. So um, the issue with your children is, is, is a really important piece. And it is a piece that, you know, pe trans people um, have to deal with a lot in terms of custody issues. And you talk in the film about how you didn't see your kids for a lot of years. And mm -hmm. so I want to get a sense of, we, you know, we see your son a lot in the film. We don't see your daughter as much. Your son is clearly doing comedy also. And is your daughter too? Like, talk a little no, bit she, about uh, your relationship with um, your daughter and your, your kids. With my kid, my, my son and I have gotten really, really close. We, uh, he's uh, not so much... Uh, he's writing again more than doing comedy. He's, you know, he's sort of, you know, he's married. He's trying to stay solid. My daughter, I don't know. She's always been sort of the reclusive one. And we really have it, you know, reconnected in a way I would have hoped. Mm -hmm. uh, which, But she's like that with everybody in her family. <laughs> so it's not just okay. me. So it's not just you. Yeah. That, that must be, that must make you feel better. Yeah. Um, so we want to. I want to talk a little bit about the, the evolution of your voice because there are some scenes in the film that we see where you're telling some pretty hard things, some jokes on stage that are transphobic, and you know, and and that moment when you're sitting there, you're like, oh, basically, holy shit, shut up, um, yeah. <laughs> right? Shut and up moment, and yeah. and we're all so talk a little bit about the evolution of your comedic voice. Um. Um. In the in in your comedy now, specifically with regard to that, or, or... no, I'm just I'm just, that that just showed me well, how me, far you've come. Yeah, let me use that as a, jump, yeah. Yeah, use that as a yeah. jumping off point. I, I I I looking at that footage, and I to be honest with you, up until Susan found it, I didn't even know it existed, mm. and didn't even remember the bit. Right, but I I got I remember the time period, and I remember that I was going through some really um, uh, hard moments back then thinking I was gay and I was having some real identity issues, didn't know what the issue was. And so uh, I think I just wanted to be uber male at that point and just, you know, be one of the guys, you know, and uh, looking back at it now, my God, I could, I could, you know, uh, I, I can't even imagine the amount of people I hurt uh, with that. And it, uh, to see it now, it just, I can't do anything except to say, I'm sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> for it. Um, especially, Having gone through it, you know, I understand it. Um, and now your comedy has come out the com other side, which is really yeah, how you use right. your your life and your evolution and and being trans, mm -hmm. and that fuels your comedy now. It, it does, and it and it fuels my perspective too. And I'm, uh, you know, I've um, I've become sort of a if I see somebody getting uh, dumped on, you know, because they're being trans, I'm the first one there. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I. I I guess you have to go through a baptism of fire like that sometime and come out the other end and just go, look, you know, you got to just listen to what I'm saying here. 
I think from my impression of comedy and comedy clubs, there's a lot of kind of like misogynistic, sexist stuff going on in a lot of them. Um, so Susan, you know, the question is, you know, I guess my preface doesn't necessarily answer that question, but you know, what was it like when you were filming in, in comedy clubs and um, do you have a previous relationship with comedy in that way? Did you have any issues related to, you know, sexism, homophobia in comedy clubs? And Julia, second part was, I want to ask you if you have that issue too. Okay. So Susan? Well, I, I followed Julia into the clubs where she was performing, where she was most comfortable and um, where, you know, she had her fan base. And it was watching her set after set after set in different environments and doing the work. The work is figuring out who that audience is. So it's very much about the craft of storytelling. And I have enormous, enormous respect for Julia, for the craft, for her, her sisters in comedy who are incredibly brave. I mean, the idea of facing an audience down with the yeah, no. objective of, you know, make me laugh. It's, I could it's never. incredibly hard. So I begin with enormous regard. And I think what I've learned from Julia's part of a there's, there's ah, Julia's so she's here. back. <laughs> uh, Julia is part of a wonderful evening of comedy that is screening now on Showtime, more, more funny women of a certain age. And uh, so I've met a lot of her colleagues in that group. And they're all gutsy, funny, incredible comedy warriors doing what they do. It's, it is a very male environment. Um, so I think. But it's changing, I think. Uh, God. Yeah, I think the respect that women are getting now, compared to when I started, mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, it's done a 180. Uh, boy, your cat must be. The cat and the dog are talking to each other through the screen. Um, Susan, what do you want people to take away from the film? Oh, gosh. I, you know, I think the most important lesson I learned from Julia um, is about being true to yourself and following what that truth, where that truth takes you. And she, you know, her her life is enormously inspiring. Um, so I think ultimately that's that's the journey of the film is follow your truth, understand who you are, and embrace that truth. And Julia does it with such courage, and such humanity, and such kindness to people around her. Um, and, and that's, I think, you know, at the heart of what I embrace and what um, people who talk to me about the film fall very much in love with her and with the lessons that she teaches about all of those things. Um, the importance well, just, of that. Um, just the honesty, I think, is the part that we all just are, are drawn to, which is, you know, you bring, bring your soul um, and um, people don't do that very often in an authentic way well I, I i i know you can't see this but in back of me there is a uh, my four rules of comedy from the great comedy writer bill persky who wrote uh kate and alley wrote kate and alley wrote the dick van dyke show i mean and I his I four rules that. were start with the truth stay human don't reach for ugly and be vulnerable and i've been tr i've tried to adhere to that um, it, before I even knew these, uh, mm. you know, when I came back to comedy, my first, I had two rules. I wanted to be totally honest and I wanted to be fearless. And so, you know, if I could live up to those principles while I'm up there, then I'm doing what I set out to do. And I, and so far it's, it's worked. And, and you, you know, you could see in the, in the uh, footage, your uncomfortableness before, Mm. Um, you know, the reaching for those certain kinds of jokes that you, you know, you, you said, you know, those are kind of almost low blows to the comfort you exude mm -hmm. on the stage. Um, and that must feel so great. The first time I said it, uh, was at the comedy works in Bristol, Pennsylvania. And when I first came back and my opening line was that I was transgendered and I, and it came out of my mouth and I was like, Wow. It was, it was life changing. Mm -hmm. uh, audience didn't believe me, but I had said it in a public place to people who didn't even know me. Whereas before I couldn't even say it to myself in the mirror when I was, right. um, you know, when I was transitioning and coming out and everything, it was been a, it's been a long 
painful but really um, wonderful, wonderful journey of discovery. And I and I and I thank Susan for getting those things into this film because I, I think I think it offers hope for other trans folks that are going through the same thing. Yeah, and a lot of the trans stories we see are younger. Um, mm -hmm. And so to see um, a person who is not, you know, young uh, and to Where? Still, <laughs> <laughs> to still embrace your, your, you know, your truth. We actually have another film in, in the festival called Mama Gloria, which is about an older mm -hmm. trans uh, person. And, and I feel, you know, I feel so great about that because um, just to teach, ever, to have everybody learn about like it all the time, you know, it's, it, it you never know. Well, um, I just, uh, and you yeah, have to be, I mean, I'm so happy to see these young people coming out. Elliot Page, for instance, yeah. uh, huge the, the, for, for the cause. Did you see um, the Time Magazine story on Elliot? I did see Elliot? it. I, I saw it this morning. What, did you, what I, were your thoughts on that? I, I, I'm, I'm so proud of him. I mean, you know, you take a career, like you know, somebody like me who's really not, you know, unknown, who is unknown, really. I can do it. Nobody gives to a rat's ass. But here he is. He's a star. He's famous. I mean, he won an Oscar, didn't he, I think? for, uh, And he's to do that, um, guts galore. Guts yeah. galore. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, we had a question. Um, so Corey, who works with us, um, is a comedy writer. And she asked a question about kind of um, regulating speech and comedy and kind of like, you know, I've seen a lot of kind of nasty sets, right? And it's kind of like free speech versus hate speech. And that mm -hmm. a lot of this, you know, some of the guys who've been canceled, um, you know, kind of flourished on that stuff. So, uh, you know, what is, what is your, how do you, how do you balance that? It's a very difficult time for comedians. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I think in a way it's a, it's a, it's a good educational time too, because it forces the comic to make decisions. Uh, you know, there was a time prior to Lenny Bruce, et cetera, where you couldn't do anything, uh, you know, risque in, in, even in a nightclub. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, I've always, um, I've always tried to, I don't, I'm not an observationalist. So that, that doesn't really affect me. I speak my truth, but I think if you're, uh, if if you if it doesn't feel right to you inside, then don't do it. It's very simple. And you've been doing some comedy sets during the pandemic online. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be tough. Too bad. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're horrible. I hate them. I mean, I um, us all comedy's gone through such a such a time with the Me Too movement too. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Susan's film is, is a good is a good chronicle of, of, of my development over five years, too. So you can see the growth in my comedy uh, from the time I started, uh, 1980. Uh, you know, and so that it's a good reference document for people who are into comedy and want to see what life was like back then. And do you, like, mentor some younger comedians um, we we saw that gathering of all the comedians. Is it is it kind of like what do you share? Like, well, what is all, a lot of them are veterans. It's a comedy oh, breakfast, so we like you know um, one of my favorite parts about being a comic is hanging out with other comics. Like, you know, you know. Yeah. and uh, uh, am I hearing voices or is yes, just... you are. You're oh. hearing our voices and, uh... coming back at us. I believe. Oh, okay, I thought. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not in your head. Uh, I was going to check my medication time. Uh, those comedian breakfast, you know, it's a great time for us to sort of commiserate and trade war stories and for young comics to come and sort of hang out with veterans and, you know, and uh, ask questions and just get to know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so much of our job is networking, you know, and thank again, I, I'm grateful for Susan for, for getting that documented because I hope other comedians in other cities will uh, yeah. maybe do the same thing. And Susan, what was the biggest challenge for you in making this <gasps> film? Can you hear me, Susan? Susan? I don't think she can hear me. Can you can hear me, Julia, though? I hear you fine, yeah. Can you hear saying? me, Susan? She's frozen. Frozen. Well, my dog will just bark for the rest of the time, so no one will have to worry about that. Sorry, guys. I don't see Susan. Can you hear, can you hear us? Okay, let's bring Susan back in. Hearing, guys. We hear you now. 
No, I don't think she's live. Oh. <coughs> okay, we're going to bring her back in. Um, let's get her back in. Because uh, I kept seeing the oh. same shot of her. Um, okay, so uh, where were we? We were uh, talking about... So um, where's everybody from? You're right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. I just, I, I um, okay, so like the pandemic will end sometime in, you know, the next century. And do you think comedy, comedy is like theater. It's going to be like one of the ones that come back towards, towards the end. What do you think like in comedy, you know, in venue stuff's going to be like? Well, that's the big question. Everybody's, uh, I've, I've done outdoor shows this winter. We did a show in a, in a, in a gigantic airplane hangar type tent. Mm. Uh, in 25 degree weather, uh, we were bundled with coats and hoods. And well, I, I remember when you came off the stage, you called me and you were so high. You were so excited. <laughs> it was such a great night. Even the water was whooshing through the tent. And, oh, that one. That was the oh. other one. Yeah, we almost got flooded out. It was. Like, but you you had such a great night because you were so hungry for that experience. It was. Just, yeah. It's this is. And such so a did that audience. It's an yeah. addiction, right? To like perform. I was away 10 years. It took me all of one night, you know, tie me off, shove the spike in, I'm back. You know, I can't, you can't, you can, you can never leave comedy. And those never. 10 years, I mean, were you hankering to? I did my best. It's like quitting smoking. I did my best to just put it out of my mind, you know, but I, at every turn, I, I made sure I told somebody that I used to be a comedian. I'm glad you quit smoking. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Um, so Susan, um, can you talk a little bit about, okay, so I lost my train of thought when you, when you, when we lost you there and about, um, so <gasps> directing and do you, how, I mean, like, how were you able to make this happen? Right. So it's like <gasps> directing for, for a lot of us, you think you got to start when you're a whatever age, but you've been in the business for a long time, but there are, there are some kind of issues, right? Related to figuring out how to get it all done. See, everybody seeing me barking. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's just this time of day. Um, so talk a little bit about the process for you in, you know, directing versus writing or producing. Mm -hmm. Well, this is specifically directing a documentary, which is not, my, my background is in narrative film. And as a screenwriter and a playwright, documentary is a whole new experience for me. And the idea of finding a wonderful, wonderful character in Julia and following her story, which was endlessly interesting, finding this trove of archival material buried in the back of her closet, um, kind of resurrecting all of that footage that was completely lost, and then learning how to write the story from the materials of documentary. So it was very exciting to be writing in a new form. And the idea of bringing together all of the craft of people who I loved, who I brought a wonderful um, animator named Sam Roth, who did animation for us, worked with my terrific editor, Marsha Moore McKeever. I was in the edit room with her every step of the way and writing the film from the material that we shot. And the process of following Julia's life and Julia's generosity and, and letting me bring cameras into every corner of that life. And, and my near death. Uh, you know, it was, it was a really, really exciting process of learning how to write stories from life in the documentary form. Uh, having, you know, taught screenwriting for so many years and been a, a playwright and screenwriter, picking up new tools was super, super fun and exciting. And, uh, you know, it's it's the best. It's the best when you're working on a project that keeps you connected to what matters in life. I was never bored for one minute. I was never tired, although the, the whole process in documentary is raising a little bit of money and doing what you can with that and raising a little bit of more and doing what you can with that. You know, it's a very slow process of finding people to believe in what you're making. Um, but I, I loved every step of the way and I had wonderful collaborators. And talk a little bit about kind of like releasing a film on the festival circuit um, during a pandemic and how do you get it out to the world? Like what's been? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I left um, the post-production company that I was doing all the beautiful work with towards the end, all of our color correction and everything. And with a basket of DCPs uh, and, you know, a map of where we were headed in the festival circuit. 
and the expectation that Julia was going to travel with the film and me and do co live comedy along with the film traveling. That was our, our game plan. And then everything just crashed. So having to find our way through the virtual world has been really challenging and figuring out you know, how to find our audience and keep it alive. It's what the learning experience everybody's been through. But we're we're really excited that we've been building wonderful audiences for this film and looking forward to our, our release. I can't talk about it yet, but that will be coming this summer. Oh, that's wonderful. And we uh, look forward to hearing that, more about that. And then also, Julia, people want to know where they can find you and support your comedy. Oh, wonderful. I'd be happy to tell them. Uh, Please? Go to my website. It's uh, www.juliascotty.com. Uh, you can get uh, my album. Can I plug my album? Of course. Uh, it's called Julia Scotty. Hello, boys. I'm back. <laughs> and you can download it on any place that fine comedy is downloadable. And my calendar is on the website. And you can sign up for my newsletter, too. So. Yeah. Great, great. Um, let's see. I don't think we have any more questions for the audience. Is there anything uh, either of you want to share as we close? Just to thank you, Melissa, for Athena and everything that Athena does and the idea of building leadership uh, in what you do. What Julia does in her own way, uh, <laughs> building leadership, I've seen her mentoring young comics and bringing them along and believing in them. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not completely what Athena is doing in the way of political life, but storytelling and comedy is very important. It mm -hmm. reaches so many people in so many ways. And I've seen Julia bring audiences into a real learning space without their knowing they were in a learning space. Mm. So the magic of that is really powerful and uh, very excited that you brought our film to your audiences here. Well, right back at you for Fusion Film Festival because you are also bringing, bringing people along. Thank you. And Julia, did you want to share anything? I just want to <clears throat> thank you for having, having us here too. Um, this whole experience is, is a whole new world for me. And I can't tell you how much I love Susan for uh, picking me. I don't think my life is all that interesting, but apparently she did. And, um, well, we're really happy. We have a, this section. I believe your film is in the Come As You Are section. Resilience. Um, resilience. I'm sorry. But it, we could have fit in multiple. Like <laughs> We were always having all these conversations. That could be in the Come As You Are. That could be in the um, Resilience. Yes. So resilience, for sure. <laughs> Um, and we appreciate, you know, Julia, you sharing your story with the world because I think My it's pleasure. really important. My pleasure. Um, and I hope that, um, you know, the communities out there can really use it as a tool to have these kind of conversations that people need to have. And I, okay, I wait, so too. one I more. Too. I think I see one more question coming in. So one more. Oh, here's Elizabeth. Um, so what's next for you, Susan? Will be there? Will there be more docs, or will you go back to narrative? And I'm just going to give a little shout out to our our friend and colleague Joan McLean Silver, who, you know, did your movie and who passed recently. So just honoring her and her place. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm working on um, what may be a miniseries. I'm not sure yet, but it is in the, in the, in the narrative realm. So. Ooh. That's news funny. to me everything's about limited series now <laughs> everybody's making a limited series that is the hot thing so and and duke says it's hot too so um say <gasps> say goodnight to your kitty for me and Why will you say goodnight I, to duke? I, I look yeah. forward to seeing you in the future and thank you everybody i'm super sorry about animals but this is pandemic life <laughs> yeah. And, yeah i mean he's a star or, look at him yeah so there we go. Have a great evening and night, we'll make sure to check out the movies. Thank you. Um, Watch.athenafilmfestival.com. Hopefully you all know that. And all the conversations that we have are free and on our website page for all the uh, issue areas, the program areas. And this conversation will also be available free. So we thank everybody for their support and their love and stay safe and stay healthy. Good night. Mwah.